Hi folks, so we're back again and we're talking more about diffusion and so we've gone through some basic questions and looked at the BAS model and now we're going to look at richer models that begin to bring in some network structure and try and understand how network structure impacts diffusion. And what we'll do is we'll start with very simple versions of this where we'll work with erdos renyi style networks and then we can talk about other kinds of networks as well and, and what we can say about how things like the degree distribution uh, affect uh, diffusion processes. Okay, so um, we're bringing in the interaction structure now and um, the basic idea here is going to be that there's some process going on in the network and we'll be thinking, you know, one thing it, that's going to be important is thinking about what's the right network to define. And often in a lot of what we've been looking at, we've just been sort of taking networks and links as, as a given and not explored too much which particular network uh, we want to be looking at and exactly what should be defining the nodes and the links. Um, so in this kind of situation, uh, you know, ultimately what's really going to be important is w when we think about a relationship or a link between two individuals, we should think of two people being uh, related if they, one has a chance of passing something to the other. Um, in whatever our diffusion process is. So if we're thinking about the flu, then we would think about, okay, I'm be, I'd be connected to all the individuals who I might infect. And so that might be a very broad range of, of uh, individuals. Um, whereas if we're thinking about, uh, you know, a political view or some new technology that I might tell somebody about, it might be a much narrower set of individuals who we might have that kind of interaction. So nodes are going to be linked if one would infect the other. And one substantial simplification we're going to make uh, to begin with is that this is going to be sort of an independent and identical probability across links. So each person has a, an equal chance of infecting any one of their neighbors, whereas that might not be true in reality where you might spend more time interacting with some individuals than others and have more of a chance of, in, uh, of, of a diffusion process proceeding um, across some links than others. So um, we'll define the links by... The, the interactions that are necessary for diffusion. We'll think about uh, questions about when will an infection take hold, how many nodes or how many people will it reach. Um, so, you know, when do we get diffusion? What's the extent of the diffusion? How does it depend on the process and the network structure? Who's likely to be uh, infected earliest? These are the kinds of questions that we can begin to answer now with the network analysis. So an important part of this is going to be understanding what the component structure is. So the reach of the contagion is going to be determined by the component structure where what we think of is in, in terms of links as links being uh, put down probabilistically um, according to whether or not two individuals would actually uh, transmit from one to another. Um, so it's possible that some nodes or players are going to be immune, um, links might fail, so what we're going to look at is, is what do the components look like if uh, only we consider the nodes that are susceptible and um, links that are actually going to transmit. Okay, so just to, to sort of remind you, um, this is a picture from Birma Moody and Stovall's uh, 2004 data of the high school romances. This would be something, um, you know, if we were, we were thinking about uh, transmission of, of mononucleosis or something, um, you know, we could think about a network like this. And, uh, you know, what we end up with is, is the component structure will actually tell us a lot. So if an initially infected individual ends up being in, in one of these uh, nodes, then if they end up being in a large component, then things can spread quite uh, extensively. If they end up um, being in a small component, then things can be quite limited. And so the, looking at the component structure will help us answer two questions. First of all, what's the probability that we start a contagion? And that's going to be the probability that we end up sort of hitting one of these large components, the large component, in this case the giant component, and then how extensive should it be? And, and in this case, if we did hit somebody in the, the giant component, then the reach of it could potentially be the size of the giant component. So understanding what the component structure is will help us understand both the, uh, the probability of starting and the eventual reach um, conditional on that. So. Um, we'll think about getting non-trivial diffusion if somebody in a giant component is infected, adopt, uh, so I'll use the word infected, but it could be adopting the new technology and so forth. And the size of the giant component is going to determine both likelihood and its extent. 
and random network models are going to allow for giant component ca calculations. And now, in terms of what we want to be thinking about in links now, you know, we, we could say, okay, well, a lot of networks we actually look at in the real world might be very well connected and, and uh, have links so that uh, everyone can reach everyone else in the world, and, and so, you know, the world is one giant component. But the, the component structure we actually want to be thinking about are going to have link probabilities that are associated with the likelihood that one individual actually infects another. So it might be that, that you know, somebody just doesn't catch the flu because they don't have um, uh, interactions with people at the right times and so forth. So the network, again, we're going to be looking at is, are people going to interact within a given time period when they're infected enough to, to transmit? And that um, can actually have a much more fragmented uh, network structure than an overall long-term network that we would look at normally. Okay, so what we're going to do is a simple example of such a calculation. And we'll start by working at uh, nerdash Renyi style random network, um, and then we'll also talk about other degree distributions. And the main question we're going to be answering is just what can we say about how big the giant component is in such a network? Okay, so how big is a giant component if there is one? Um, and let's think about uh, so let's think about GNP as our, as our starting model. And uh, if, we, if we think about that in terms of uh, the starting model, then you know, the size of the giant component is going to be interesting when P is in the range where the giant component isn't so small that it doesn't exist or so large that uh, we have almost full connection. So the interesting re region is going to be when P is somewhere between 1 over N and log N over N. Um, and, and otherwise, we're going to have basically isolated small components or a fully connected network. And if we remember from before, you know, when, when uh, P was smaller than 1, um, or sorry, expected degree is smaller than 1, um, so that's what, uh, you know, in this range here with 50 nodes, P being 0.01, each person has an expected range of, of half a neighbor, then we end up with um, not many people uh, infecting each other, and so we end up with, um, you know, lots of very tiny components, actually only uh, one that even has two links in it and lots of isolates. So this kind of, of situation, if, this, if the interaction structure was so limited, um, we wouldn't see much of a contagion at all. Um, so 0.02 is the point at which you have one expected neighbor. Above that, you begin to get a giant component, and here we would end up having, uh, you know, about half the nodes, a little more than half in the giant component, and so, you know, it would be about a half a probability of infecting, and it would infect half the, probabil uh, the population. Um, once you get to about two and a half as an expected um, uh, set of neighbors, then we get almost the whole uh, network uh, whole population connected, so we have a high probability of reaching everybody and uh, um, a, a high number of people infected once uh, one person is. And then once we get here to, um, with, with 50 nodes, once we have uh, an expected degree of 5, um, we, we're past the, the threshold for connection and we end up having a connected network and now um, if this was, if the interaction structure was this dense, then you would expect uh, full contagion. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually go through some calculations next to give us more explicit numbers on, on some of these things and, and calculate the size, the expected size of the giant component rather than just looking at these pictures. So the pictures are based on these thresholds and indeed, you know, when we go from the threshold below expected degree of one to a high enough expected degree to have everybody connected, um, we're going to hit the two extremes and the interesting part's going to be in between and so let's take a look at that next.